Rot eats modern buildings alive. Decks crumble, fence posts fail, cabins rot from the ground up. And yet, over a thousand years ago, Viking builders figured out a wood treatment so effective that parts of it are still standing today, while pressure-treated lumber from the hardware store struggles to survive a few decades. This isn't folklore. It's chemistry, patience, and, well, brutal environmental testing. If you value real survival knowledge and forgotten building wisdom, subscribe to History's Survival Code now, because algorithms forget fast but old world knowledge doesn't forgive ignorance. Why Viking wood survived when modern wood fails? Modern wood treatments promise protection, but most are designed for speed, mass production, and profit margins. Vikings didn't build that way. They built for weather that tried to kill them. Salt air, constant moisture, freezing winters. Rot wasn't an inconvenience. It was a death sentence for homes, ships, and food stores. The Viking solution wasn't paint, varnish, or surface sealants. It was a deep, cellular-level transformation of the wood itself. They understood, through experience, that rot doesn't start on the surface. It starts inside the fibers where moisture, fungi, and bacteria move freely. So instead of coating wood, they altered it. Their answer was a rot-proof wood dip made from natural compounds that modern builders quietly abandoned because it takes time, smells bad, and can't be rushed. The Viking wood dip relied on pine tar, ash-derived lye, and, a uh, prolonged soaking. Pine tar wasn't decorative. It was harvested slowly by heating pine roots and resin-rich wood in, you know, low-oxygen pits producing a thick black antiseptic liquid loaded with phenols and acids that fungi really hate. These compounds don't just repel moisture, they poison rot at the microscopic level. Wood was submerged, not brushed, sometimes for weeks, sometimes longer. The goal was saturation. When pine tar penetrates deeply, it replaces water inside the wood's cells. That matters because fungi need moisture to survive. Starve them, and rot never starts. Ash lye, produced by soaking hardwood ashes in water, added alkalinity. High pH environments are, well, hostile to decay organisms. Combined with tar, the wood became chemically unfriendly to anything trying to digest it. This wasn't fast, it wasn't convenient, but you know, it worked. Why this still beats pressure-treated lumber? Pressure-treated lumber relies on copper-based compounds forced into wood under artificial pressure. It looks advanced. It smells industrial. And honestly, it still fails when cut, cracked, or exposed over time. Once those chemicals leach out, rot resumes. Viking-treated wood didn't rely on surface integrity. The treatment was the wood. Even when cracked, scraped, or cut, the interior remained hostile to decay. That's why Viking ships survived decades of saltwater exposure. That's why ancient structures outlast barns built in the 1970s. Modern treatments also, you know, sacrifice flexibility. Viking wood, on the other hand, stayed elastic. That really mattered in ships, where rigid wood just snaps under stress. Flexibility plus rot resistance, well, that equals longevity. Builders today rarely, if ever, optimize for both. The step modern builders skip and end up paying for later. The most ignored part of the Viking method wasn't actually the tar. It was drying. Wood was seasoned slowly, sometimes for years, before any treatment. Moisture content was reduced naturally, not kiln-blasted for speed. Dry wood absorbs treatment deeper and more evenly. After dipping, the wood wasn't rushed into construction. It cured. Excess tar drained out. Fibers stabilized. This prevented internal moisture pockets, which are the silent killers of treated lumber. You know, modern construction skips this because, well, time is money. 
But the Vikings, they skipped nothing because for them, failure meant exposure, hunger, or even death. So, why did this knowledge vanish? Industrialization didn't erase Viking wisdom because it didn't work. No, it erased it because it didn't scale. Pine tar production is slow. Lye preparation is, honestly, messy. Soaking wood takes space and, uh, patience. And none of that really fits into modern supply chains. Builders didn't forget because they were ignorant. They forgot because survival just stopped being the priority. Convenience replaced durability. Replacement, well, it replaced permanence. History's survival code exists to reverse that amnesia. Can this method still be used today? Yes. And well, in some places, it never stopped. Traditional boat builders still use pine tar because, honestly, nothing else performs the same in wet conditions. Heritage restoration projects rely on it because, you know, modern coatings just fail historical stress tests. For ground contact posts, beams, or outdoor structures, pine tar treatments can, you know, really outperform store-bought preservatives when applied correctly, especially when paired with proper drainage and airflow. No miracle coating saves wood buried in wet soil, but Viking-treated wood buys you decades. This method isn't about nostalgia. It's about, well, understanding material behavior. Wood rots because biology attacks moisture. Remove moisture access, alter pH, and introduce antifungal compounds, and rot loses the fight. The survival lesson hiding in plain sight. This isn't just about wood. It's about how humans solve problems when failure isn't abstract. Vikings didn't rely on marketing claims. They relied on storms, winters, and graves to test their methods. You know, modern survival culture often chases gadgets. But well, Vikings chased principles. Treat the material, not the symptom. Slow down to last longer. Build once, not twice. That mindset is why their buildings, ships, and infrastructure echo across centuries while modern structures quietly decay behind fresh paint. Why should builders care right now? Well, climate is getting harsher, and moisture cycles are more extreme than ever before. Materials are thinner, and treatments are, honestly, more diluted. If you build, prep, or plan for long-term resilience, ignoring old-world solutions is... Uh, strategic blindness. You don't need to live like a Viking, but you should, you know, think like one. Because when systems fail, rot doesn't wait. If this episode sharpened your survival instincts and made you question modern shortcuts, go ahead and subscribe to History's Survival Code, share this with someone who builds or preps, and, well keep these forgotten systems alive, because the past already solved problems the future is about to face again.